All right, let's look at the sketch for this uh, example. y equals square root of x, y equals 1, and x equals 4, and perhaps that's about right here. So we have a, a, a clear region in which we have um, a bounded space right here. Okay, uh, axis of revolution, y equals 1. So our rectangle is going to be vertical because it's always perpendicular to the axis of revolution. So we'll draw in our representative rectangle right here. Okay. And as we rotate around this axis of revolution, there's no gap between the rectangle, any rectangle you inscribe in here, and the axis of revolution. And no gap means no hole. If I attempted to draw in a picture of this volume or this solid of revolution, it would have me take the square root graph and draw a reflection through this axis of revolution. So it looks something like this. Then I would need to draw in, extend the uh, representative rectangle. And then once again, I would try and connect with the thin ellipse. That's the problem, trying to go too thin. Okay, these reflected points and hoping that that picture jumps out at you. All right, let's uh, come over here and record the formula for the volume of this solid of revolution. We know it's disks, so here's the formula. All right, setting up our integral. Okay, so we know that the upper limit is going to stop at x equals 4. It's the lower limit that I need to find. And in order for me to find this lower limit, which is not going to be 0, I need to find an intersection of the square root graph with y equals 1. So I think we all can see that the square root of x equals 1 when these two equations are equal. That means that x is 1. So this point is likely 1, 1. Okay, so we have the limits. We had a little work to do. All right, and let's find a representation of the radius of this disk. Well, the radius of the disk is going to go from the square root of x to the axis of revolution, which is 1. So we're going to subtract those two values to get that length. So square root of x minus 1. And to find the value of this integral, it's certainly very doable to FOIL this uh, and to write rational exponents and do reverse power rules and evaluate, but to save time. Okay, let's just say that we type this into Y1, go to the home screen, do the necessary keystroke, and we're going to get actually 7, 6. So we want to make sure and include the pi, so it's 7 pi over 6. So for this final example, we need to look at integration with respect to y. And so you can see that we have in the equation x equals 1 over square root of y. Um, likely that that graph is going to be given. So let's take a look at it. x equals 1 over the square root of y, where y falls between 1 and 4. So if y is 1, and you put that in here, x is also going to be 1. So, I mean, you could pl plot some points okay, to help you um, graph this. Uh, go to the other end of the interval where y is 4. If you plug in 4 for y, square root of 4 is 2, so x would be a half. So if x is a half, y is 4. So maybe this is a half here and y is 4, but if you remember, this is a half, and this is 4. If you remember, when I plugged in 1, the other end point here, I got an uh, x-coordinate of 1. So when x is 1, or excuse me, when, yeah, when x is 1, y is also 1. So maybe something like this. Okay, so what happens is, is actually this graph comes down this way and then levels off this way. 
Okay, so that's kind of the graph that we're going to have. Okay, so we've got x equals 1 over the square root of y graph. Now we need to go in and look at the boundary. So y equals 1, that's here, and y equals 4, that's here. And we're also told to consider the y-axis, so that's where x equals 0, so that's right here. So we have this clearly bounded region created by this situation. Okay, our axis of revolution is the y-axis, so it's a little different. Now we have a vertical axis of revolution, so our rectangles have to go in on their sides, horizontal. Notice that no matter what rectangle you lay in here horizontally, uh, one side of that rectangle will always border that axis of revolution. Okay, well, this might be an easy one to draw as far as the solid. Draw the region um, reflected across the axis of revolution. So that would look something like this. I'm going to extend there. I'm going to extend my representative rectangle. I'm going to connect the reflected points with the thin ellipse. Oh, that's all I needed was to do this horizontally. And you can see the solid that's generated. All right, I think I have everything I need. The picture I can use now to help me set up my integral. It's integration with respect to y, because the thickness of each of these cylinders is a change in y, so dy. So remember, that means our limits are c to d. And our radius of our cylinder is going to be in terms of y. And then we have dy here. Lower limit 1. Okay, that's the lowest that our um, cylinder will be stacked in here. And the highest our cylinder will go in here is up at 4. And to find the radius, okay, well the radius from the axis of revolution traveling this way Okay, that distance, that radius amount, is going to be the right curve minus the left axis of revolution in this case. So that would be um, 1 over square root of y minus, and this x is 0. So y axis is x equals 0. So right curve minus left curve here where the left curve is the axis of revolution. Okay, I do want to um, take some time and look at this as far uh, as algebraically solving it because some interesting things happen. Okay, let's square this. So that would be 1 over y dy. Okay, it's just a dummy variable now. It doesn't matter, but we know how to integrate that. Okay, that goes back to the natural log of absolute value of y evaluated from 1 to 4. So that's going to be pi. Okay, and the natural log of absolute value of 4, but that's already positive, so the uh, absolute value is unnecessary, minus natural log, for the same reason, of just 1, coming down here. So pi times, and let's do a little work in here, natural log of 1 is 0, so it's just pi ln 4. And if that answer is not there, if this is multiple choice, um, compare, look at the choices. Okay, look at this argument is what we call it. Look at this 4. I can rewrite it as a, a 2 squared, a power, 2 squared. And why would I want to do that? Because using properties of logs, I can pull that exponent in front. And I could have 2 times the pi that's already there times ln2. So this is really a simplified log when you take and break down this argument into a power and move the power um, as a coefficient. So it could be either one. Okay, so hopefully through these examples you have a better understanding of finding volumes of solids of revolutions by using the DISC method. And all that that means has to take place in order for you to use um, these formulas.